Dear Elizabeth and Daniel, I take my food regularly. I like to sing and go for walks. But my brain works in such a difficult way and I may forget things that happened yesterday. I'm living with dementia. Back in 2009, mum was first to be diagnosed with cancer and that was stage 3B breast cancer, right? When we were bringing mummy to the clinic, uh, three of us, me, dad and mum, there are little early signs of dad forgetting stuff. Right? Forgetting to bring keys, forgetting to bring uh, things, the medical appointments and stuff. So we were just say, Baba, just go in to get it checked uh, since we are already here. And of course, fortunately, unfortunately, we, we was diagnosed with dementia. So Daddy has been a businessman all his life. He's the decision maker. Uh, he's the breadwinner for the family. Mummy, we are a dual income uh, family, but Daddy seems to be the one that uh, is my way or the highway. And if we ever negotiate, then his voice will come up louder than us. Uh, so the loudest wins, right? But I was growing up, this was my perspective, seeing him, man of the house, alpha male. I told my son, if, if you start to quarrel and fight this and that, no? Father and son will be not, uh, not, not like in good terms, and that, that is bad already. My journey as a caregiver started when I was 29. When he was first diagnosed, there was a bit of a denial for a fact, because it's like, why me, right? I'm glad that we diagnosed daddy with dementia, um, but I was really sad because I didn't know what to do with it. It's not like you just take medication and it will, it will, it will recover. There's only three of us. If two of you are sick, then how are we going to survive? When you are first told that your family member has dementia, there are many questions that go through your mind. And sometimes when you see changes in your, in your loved one with dementia, you start to panic and you wonder, what should I do? When this happened at 2009, I was, at a, I was in art school. Uh, it was the South College of the Arts. We had no money to put mummy through uh, some of her treatments and daddy's uh, uh, medication for dementia was not subsidised. It's got to be cash. And that's 360 a month for the rest of his life. Uh, I was selling everything that we could sell. Uh, if money was raised from the students, the staff, the academics, the administrative, uh, and even my peers. Uh, but what happened what, on, the, on the flip side is that um, I lost a lot of my friends. Uh, my peers could not understand uh, what I was going through. I was being reclusive, I had adverse thoughts. I wasn't uh, eating right, sleeping well, and having uh, my own social network. Uh, I felt very alone. For every person with dementia, one family caregiver or two family caregivers have to change their whole lifestyle, give up work sometimes to care for that person with dementia. And for caregivers, depending also on your financial ability or your family uh, dynamics, you know, the needs could be also again different. That's sometimes very stubborn. So you've got to try like 10 different methods to coax him to do certain things. So the way I challenge is I always play up this alpha male. La. You know, I'm always my dad. Ma. Yeah, so can you do this for me now? I wake up in the morning and of course I wash my face, my mouth, clean up. Then come and have a look first, what is good for breakfast. The coffee, I well, have it ready on the table. I'll take a few sips, go back right to the kitchen, take two pieces of bread. Then he have to make himself the bread, butter and bread, all this on the bread. Let him do. To open the car is for himself, because we're talking about the grip strength here. If you continue to unscrew the bottle cap for your loved ones, they will not be able to do it over time, because they don't know how to do it anymore. So to empower him, I think that's, that's the way to go. As a caregiver, you are not trained to take care of a person with dementia. And so if you, if you go into the caregiving journey without any training or very little knowledge about the condition, it can be very, very daunting and very, very difficult. 
it comes to a point where you're at the tipping point or the breaking point, um, you can't do this alone anymore. Um, that's where I found help. The Caregivers Alliance came along. Uh, they were offering the, the Dementia Caregivers to Caregivers program. And it was just us talking as people who are facing similar situations. So, so it was caregivers trying to troubleshoot ourselves. Um, what kind of things worked, what kind of things didn't work. I think my whole sense of belonging was that now finally people could understand me and, and, and I'm not stupid to say that, yeah, I, I really cannot take it. You know, having this kind of support groups and sharing stories and us also learning through these stories and then, then training other caregivers as well makes, makes a difference. I had a reporting officer when my time in LaSalle, uh, who years later, his mom uh, had been diagnosed with dementia. His name is Danny Raven Tan. So Danny came to me one day and saying that, uh, hey, we want to start up something because we're both going through similar situations. He cares for mom, I care for dad. In February 2018, we started this thing called Enable Asia. On one evening, we spoke and he said, you know what, maybe we should create something, a festival to, to, to talk about persons living with dementia and talk about caregivers like ourselves. What we are doing is very unique. We use dance, music, theatre, visual arts, all kinds of art form to help this community. And through arts, we can slow down, not cure, but slow down dementia. Now, more and more positivity is being portrayed for people with dementia and how caregivers are able to still cope, you know, and still enjoy the journey and treasure the journey of caring for a person with dementia. I think that really reduces the stigma a lot. Because of COVID, we are 24-7, 365 at home with each other. Uh, I really needed that space, so therefore we needed to do some minor uh, adjustments within the house. We put on additional doors and enclosures so that I can feel that I'm pocketed in my space. I made a conscious attempt to switch out all the lights to the three different lights so we can mimic daylight. During our home improvement projects, we wanted to remove the toilet doors uh, because the toilet doors could not encourage wheelchair to go in. So Daddy's bedroom is just go in down. Yeah, it's not a hump. There are things that we have to be very mindful of to minimise distractions, as such, for example, flooring to be less reflective. Hand grills are usually helpful for them to navigate and move around in the home environment. I would say it has to be customised to the conditions of the clients during the state of time. The whole idea of a, a caring experience is that I, I think it has to be very personalised. We don't hear enough of our loved ones telling us how they like to be cared for. I think we've got to be mindful about that because we always administer the care that we think is logical. Maybe perhaps start listening to what your loved ones want as compared to what you want to do for them. It's been 13 years. Huh? I don't know what the future looks like, but uh, I can't predict that. But I know that whatever I'm doing right now, uh, in his eyes, he kind of affirms that. In one of the conversations uh, recorded on video, he says, uh, I'm proud of you as my son. And that was closure for me. He is a good son. Good. Uh, you care about me all. Uh -huh. You care. We feel happy as, as you go older. And, and, healthy, and, 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 and we are healthy. healthy. For me, it's different. I will take a simple, simple food and, and sing. When you sing, uh, forget your, your problem, uh, the unhappiness uh, all disappear away. Dear Elizabeth and Daniel, I feel fine. I'm living with dementia, but I'm okay and normal. I know what is going 
on around the world. Sometimes I do things in a slower way, and I seem to remember things that happened many years ago. But sometimes I may forget things that happened yesterday. My brain works in such a difficult way, but this is okay. I will take it as it comes. Thank you to both of you for taking care of me. Please take care of yourself too. Peter Lim San Ho. If you miss the train I'm on, you will know that I am gone. You can hear the whistle blowing a hundred miles. Okay, That's a good one, eh?